Bonjour. I can see you. Bienvenue. Bonjour Atlanta. We are listening to Vianney, a young French singer. Bonjour California. Bonjour Victoria BC and Vancouver BC. Bienvenue les amis. Bonjour Florida. Bonjour Elizabeth. I'm just waiting a few minutes for people to arrive and then we'll get going. 60 people, 64 already. 65. Où est Véro? Véro est ici. Bonjour Michel et Bob. Bonjour Chicago. Bonjour, Virginia. We could do a class on North American geography. Idaho, Michigan. Bienvenue, les amis. Bienvenue. Bonjour, bonjour, Jacqueline. Bonjour, Kevin. Bonjour, le Texas. Almost 75 people already. I'll just give it another minute and then we'll get started. Missouri, Ohio. Bonjour. Sylvain, où sont les Français? I don't know where the Frenchies are. That's probably because I speak English, you know. <laughs> Washington, D.C. Bonjour, Kevin. Bonjour, bonjour. Wisconsin, New Jersey, Chicago. No, the cool thing is I have a lot of good memories from almost all of those names I've just read. All of these places. That's really cool. I love to brighten your weekend. Dans ma chaussette. <laughs> yeah, I think in English a lot. I won't lie. Ohio. Hello from the treadmill. Watch, watch, watch out there. Don't miss your step. All right. Hey Google, volume 2. Gotta lower the music a little bit. Love Google. Hey Tommy, bonjour. All right, my friends. How are we doing? Coucou, c'est moi. So happy to see you. 90 people already. Boy, I think you enjoy these little gatherings as much as I do. Maryland, they're still coming in. Great. Few more seconds. Okay, so I have a fun program for you today. My name is Véronique Véro, for those of you who might not know me, a French girl who lived in uh, Seattle for two decades and is now back in France and based in Paris. And I started doing these exactly a month ago. This is Apéro with Véro number four. So thank you for being here. Thank you for returning if you've been here every single week. 
I'm really enjoying doing this. It takes me a few hours to prepare for these, but I enjoy the research and I enjoy thinking of stories I can tell. Uh, 2 a.m. in Australia. Catherine Barnett, you are, you are one brave soul. Thank you for being here. Thank you. Thank you to our Australian friends. <laughs> so, yep, it's numero 4, number 4, for Apero with Vero. So today, we are going to do what we did last week. I have several parts in this little program. The first one is that we, through music, through a song that I choose, we uh, discover a place in France, in Paris, or maybe a side of French culture that you may not know about yet. And I use music to do that. So last week, my favorite assistant tour guide, Charles Trenet, was such a hit that um, I thought I would ask him to come back and help me again. So he's going to help me take you around France today. After that, we might do a little practice, pronunciation French practice for five or 10 minutes like last week. Very easy, very light. So don't run away if you don't want to learn French because I keep it light and fun. It's not going to be a boring grammar or spelling class, I promise. And then after that, we take a look at what I made for my apéro because the program is called Apéro with Vero. And here in Paris, it's after 6.30 p.m. So it's, it's time for l'apéro. Uh, I know for some of you, it's the morning and it's uh, lunchtime. But here, uh, you know, it's the end of the day. And it's been another beautiful day. We've had a downpour. We had a downpour about an hour ago, a little less, which was quite unexpected. But the sun came back out. And this past month, that's all we've had, a lot of sun. So I'd like to take you on a little tour de France today. And I'd like to do that uh, with the help of my assistant tour guide, Charles Trenet, but also, um, and a song, but also some photos that I have prepared for you. So I am going to turn on my iPad, if you don't mind. And I will start our little tour. So let's see, we are going to switch this around like so. Can you see? Can you see the screen on the iPad? I hope you can, because I set it up a little higher this week. Okay, so here we are. And we are by the side of a French road. And if you look at the old marker on the side of that French road, you can see that this road is called N seven and you may have heard about it you may you may have heard about the national set you may know that in france if you've driven around my homeland we have different types of roads um, the popular ones because they are really efficient are the les autoroutes so les autoroutes in the united states uh, will be like uh, toll roads very efficient very modern and they take you take you from uh, point a to point b really quickly though they do cost money but before Les Autoroutes arrived in the 1970s and after, we had national roads. And national roads were interstates. You know, they went across the country. And then below that, we had les départementales, departmental roads, because they were more regional or local roads. So I am going to tell you a story today. And my friend Charles Trenet, my assistant tour guide, will tell part of this story, but I will start with a few photos. I am going to tell you the story of a road. If you mention the name to almost any French person above 35 years old, they will know immediately what you're referring to. And they will tell you it's a very special road to them. This road has been around forever. In fact, when the Romans lived in Gaul, France was known as Gaul at the time, there were already roads connecting Paris to other sections. It wasn't called Paris then, it was called Lutetia, but the Romans were more interested in Lyon. Lyon was the capital of the Gauls and it was called Lugdunum. And so they were interested in connecting Lyon to parts of southern France. And so they had roads doing that already at that time. And then the French kings came along through the Middle Ages and later, and this road, N7, National Route Nationale 7, has been around. It was a royal road. It was an imperial road. It's been around forever. It's as, it's as old as France, practically. And it is Napoleon I in the early 1800s that gave it number seven. Um, so it's been around, and the French love that road because for decades, and through most of the 20th century, 
this road was the only way to go from Paris to southern France. And eventually, of course, the toll road, l'autoroute A6, A6, l'autoroute du soleil, the famous one that takes people zzz, to southern France really quickly. That one arrived in the 70s, but until then, the only way you could leave Paris in the summer to go south was to be on that road. Okay, so this is the story of a road. It's the story of a, it's a slice of France, the story of that road, really. This was the original uh, route. You would leave Paris, and it's the blue one, and you would go all the way to Menton. You would go through, leave Paris here through La Porte d'Italie, and then you would go through Burgundy, you would go through Lyon, though at some point you had a choice of not going through Lyon, and then you would go south through Provence, through Avignon, Aix-en-Provence, and then you would follow the French Riviera all the way through Nice, and then Menton, which as you know probably is the last French, it's the last French uh, city before you reach Italy. So this was La Nationale 7. Does it exist today still? Yes, it does. It's been declassified in sections, so now it's not a national road everywhere anymore. And most people will ride l'autoroute, the A6, l'autoroute du soleil, instead of the National Set. Because at that time, it would take two and a half days at least. If you didn't stop a lot, it would take you two and a half days to do, you know, Paris to southern France. Now it takes seven and a half hours through the autoroute. You can see why that wouldn't be very efficient. Yes, you mentioned Fontainebleau, I saw it in the comments. So I want you to see how iconic this road is and how it still inspires people. It has its own museum somewhere in southern France. This one says Eternal National 7, Rediscover National 7, The Chronicles of National 7. So this is really part of French life and part of French history. Look at this picture. These were people riding, uh, you know, going south on National, on La Nationale Set. And in a minute, I'm going to tell you why it's so intricately linked to the story, uh, the, the history of France. So if you say lots of cars, what do you say? Well, you say a lot of traffic, right? And this was a very well-known uh, photo of La Nationale 7, because as it went through some smaller towns, as you can imagine, traffic backed up very quickly, because today, at that time, like today, the French had a tendency to leave at the same time. And so a lot of these small towns along the way would be totally clogged up with the traffic in the summer. Somebody says we cannot see the photos. Um, my understanding is that people can see the photos. Can you see the photos? I need to know if you can't. I'm going to wait because I know there's a delay in the comments. I know they drag. I can see. Okay, we have people who can see, dear. So something's up because I can see it through my screen as well. I'm sorry. All right. This to me, if I got hit on the head, and woke up on the side of that road, I would know that I am in France. If you have traveled around France by car, you have seen roads like this one. This is the National 7, La Nationale 7. But you would see this everywhere. You would see this everywhere. Those long roads with the beautiful platane or sycamore trees on the side, especially in southern, in, um, in southern France to protect you in the shade in the summer from the summer heat. So this is typical, really, of riding the National Set. Here are some old markers that you will still find on the side of the road, though they become harder and harder to find, and a lot of them ended up at that museum that I mentioned earlier. Now, the reason I said talking about La National Set is talking about a slice of French history is because it is so linked to something very important that happened in France in the 1930s. There was, um, in 1936, there was a, a coalition government in power in France with strong leftist uh, tendencies, you might say. And they passed some groundbreaking legislation to help workers in France. People who had so far uh, worked six days a week with no time off, 
found out that from then on, the work week was going to be 40 hours a week and that everyone in France who worked would be entitled to taking two weeks of paid vacation a year. We cannot imagine today what it must have been like for these people, those blue collar workers, the miners who worked in the mines in northern France and other sections to all of a sudden have the luxury to go on vacation for two weeks every year. And so, of course, the train was very helpful. They got great discounts on the train. But remember, the cars had become really big in the roaring 20s, in the 1930s. So it was perfect timing, if you will. And so here we go. I'm just going to scroll here. This is what you would do then. You would take your little car, whatever car you, you had, and you would just pile up the kids and all the bags and you would head south to the sun. Some of these people had never seen a lot of sun. If they lived in northern France, if they were miners who worked in northern France, they had never, you know, you don't see a lot of sun. So it was very, it was very nice that finally they had a chance. And you can see it was very laid back. People were camping on the side of the roads, La Nationale Set. They didn't have, you know, they didn't afford, uh, they couldn't afford hotels, so they would camp. They would make, they would have picnics. Here's a family heading south, the mom and the two kids. Um, so, you know, this is how they did it. And look at these guys. This looks quite civilized, doesn't it? So you had a little bit of everything. You had working classes, you had other other people and everybody headed south and the only way you could head south if you drove was to go through la nationale set now of course if you say cars you say traffic jams cars breaking down arguments on the side of the road so it was quite chaotic sometimes this trip that took two and a half days but a whole economy developed around that road so you had hotels because people had to be able to spend the night on the way down. And then you had restaurants. Some of them, of course, are closed today because the road is not used as much as it used to be. And you would have garages and gas stations. In fact, uh, some smart restaurant owners opened gastronomic restaurants through the 50s and 60s along the National Set. Paul Bocuse in Lyon was one of them. So you could eat very simply, have a picnic. But if you had money, you could also take the drive and then stop on the way at a beautiful restaurant and had a, at a Michelin starred restaurant and have a great meal. So this was really part of going on vacation. And that's why the road was nicknamed early on La Route des Vacances, the holiday road, the vacation road. And in 1935, they gave it a quality label called the Blue Road. It became the Blue Road, La Route Bleue, because it went to where the sun was shining. And it became, you know, it was a way of acknowledging its, its role for tourism and mass tourism in particular. So people today love the story of La Nationale Set. They may not ride on La, or drive on La Nationale Set very often anymore because it's not very fast, but they look back and they see vintage photos of vintage cars. And the cars are a big appeal. Part of the appeal about the legend of La Nationale Set are, of course, the vintage cars that used to drive along that road. Now, as I mentioned, in small towns, in some towns, the traffic was incredible because France did already what it is still doing today. People left at the same time and there were some weekends during the summer it was called Le Chassé Croisé, where people who had left in July returned, like these guys, and those who were leaving in August were there. So you had les Juilletistes, those who left in July, and you had les, les Aoussiens. Aout, août is August, so les Aoussiens were the ones leaving in August. Look at these guys watching the show. This is a lot of fun. Yeah? <laughs> And when they built the freeway in the 1970s, the same thing still happened. In fact, today, some people will ride, will go south on this road just so they can avoid the terrible traffic uh, during rush hour weekends on the toll roads, on l'autoroute. So this town here is known as La Palisse and uh, it's near Vichy on the way to Lyon. And La Palisse was famous because the roads were so tight that there would always be traffic jams there. 
So do you see a difference with this photo and the other photo? You see this one? This one was taken just a few months ago. Every year in October, there is an event where people go back to La Palisse to recreate, to reenact what it was like to go on vacation along National Set with your family in vintage cars. They do this, I believe, every year through La Palisse, the same town. So as you can see, La National Set, and it's, uh, it's the myth of La National Set, is still very much there today. Ah, I had to include this one. This is the beautiful Chateau de La Palisse well-known chateau and in the front is my favorite car in the whole entire world people who follow french girl in seattle on facebook or on the blog know this already this is the citroen de chevaux the 2cv uh, iconic french car and this funny picture during the reenactment they do in october is actually a little wink wink at a famous movie series that came out in the 60s with an actor we all love named Louis de Funès. And it was the series was known as Le Gendarme de Saint-Tropez. And one of the famous characters in the series was a nun. She was a crazy driver. So this is clearly, you would need to see if you're, if you're not French and you show up that day, you're wondering why is this gentleman riding in that cute funky little car with that nun standing there. I believe the nun might actually be a man from the picture <laughs> I'm looking at. So you would wonder, well, this is, this is a, a wink wink at that movie, Le, Le Gendarme. So now we come to my friend Charles Le Trenet my assistant tour guide, my favorite assistant tour guide. Charles Trenet, we talked about him over the last few weeks. You know how big of a star he was until his death. You know how much of a star he still is today. What a great um, songwriter and performer he was. You know, he lived in my corner of the Parisian woods. We talked about that last week. And you know, he was born in Southern France where he owned properties for the rest of his life including a beautiful one in Juan les pins on the Riviera, on the French Riviera. And Charles loved to go south. He loved the south. He loved the sun. So he would ride down, you know, the National Set, just like every other person. And he loved it so much, he actually wrote a song about it. In 1955, he wrote a song called La Route Nationale Set. And from that day on, that road became even more famous because whenever people were on it, they had the song in their minds. And that's the song we will listen to today. Yeah, if you want to see the Gendarme movies, you should definitely see them. They're really fun, especially the first ones. Um, this is the house that Charles Trenet built for himself and designed himself in Juan les Pins. It's a funky house. Uh, it's inspired. It's, it, I think he was a big fan of Le Corbusier, the famous architect. And so he designed that uh, house and called it Le Bateau, the boat. So this is one of the houses that he visited when he drove down uh, La Route Nationale said to go south. This is very new and a little weird. Charles Trenet is a big deal in southern France, especially in his hometown in Narbonne. And last summer, they introduced this sculpture as a tribute to Charles Trenet. So that's his finger you see sticking up over there. And that's his famous hat, the way he wore it, tilted back. Now, if I, see, if I show you this picture, you'll see what they were trying to do. Remember, they called him le fou chantant, the crazy singing man, because he rolled his eyes and jumped everywhere. And as you can see, that's what they did. So if you leave Narbonne on the toll road, on the autoroute, um, I forgot the name of the exit exactly, but it, it got inaugurated a year ago in tribute to Charles Trenet. But remember, as we wrap up this little photo presentation, our little road trip here, remember that La Route Nationale set, should you be inclined to follow it next time you go to France, um, it will still take you through beautiful places in France. It may not be as efficient as riding on l'autoroute, but one of the first places you will hit as soon as you leave Paris, there is Fontainebleau, of course, and there is uh, Barbizon, the town that welcomed so many artists. Uh, you will eventually reach Nevers, Nevers in Burgundy with its magnificent cathedral and many other towns on the way. This is La Palisse, the one where all the traffic jams were. 
the, you may recognize the chateau there. And then once you reach Lyon, you head full south. Here is Lyon, beautiful Lyon with the Fourvier Basilica on top of the hill, the old town down here, the Saône River, and then there's another river on the other side. So once you reach Lyon, you head full south and the border considered to be southern France is Valence. V-A-L-E-N-C-E. Once you reach Valence, you have arrived officially in the south. And from there, you go full south. You'll go through Avignon. There'll be Aix-en-Provence. Then you'll reach the French Riviera. You'll go through Antibes. You'll go through uh, Cannes, Antibes, Nice. And eventually, you will make it to Menton. Menton, the last French city, right next to the Italian border that we saw on the map. And here is Menton in all of its glory. So don't hesitate to do that one day if you have a little time and want to have a fun road trip and, and expect to see along the way not just a museum dedicated to La Nationale Set but also some old rundown hotels and restaurants that are no, now closed um, and where people take pictures because it's part of our past, it's part of our history. Okay, so here we go. Back at E and voila! What did you think? Wow, Menton, I know Menton is gorgeous, huh? Yes, the Lemon Festival is in Menton, that's correct. Valence, Valence is a gorgeous town. I see some of you have been to southern France and Nice, of course, is a very popular city. So a lot of you have been there. Good, good, you enjoy that. I'm glad, I'm glad. Well, I do, I do work at it, Oliver. Thank you. I, you know, I prepare for these like, like you do for yours. So let's see. Now, I told you Charles Trenet was going to help me on this tour. I just spilled my water over there in case you're hearing some sounds. <laughs> I had a glass of water and I just spilled everything. Thank goodness I didn't spill the wine. Ooh. So, merci. I love teaching. So, I am now going to take you, Charles and I, Charles Trenet and I are going to take you on the rest of our little tour and then Charles will sing about La Route Nationale Set. And just like last week, we're going to take a, lo a look at the song first, right? I think you enjoyed doing that last week. So this is La Route Nationale Set. So I know with the comments scrolling on the bottom of your screen, it's not easy. So I'll try and lift this up as I go, right? So it's called Route Nationale Set and it was written in 1955. De toutes les routes de France d'Europe, of all the roads in France and in Europe, celle que je préfère est celle qui conduit, the one I prefer is the one that takes me, en auto ou en autostop, by car or hitchhiking, vers les rivages du Midi, to the shores of the Mediterranean. Le Midi, with, with a capital M in France, refers to southern France, wherever it is. When the French say le midi, it's southern France. National set, il faut la prendre qu'on aille à Rome, à set. We must take it whether we go to Rome or to set, set in southern France. Que l'on soit deux, trois, quatre, cinq, six ou sept, whether there are two, three, four, five, six or seven of us, c'est une route qui fait recette. It's a popular choice, it's a popular road. Route des vacances, remember that's the nickname the holiday or the vacation road, qui traverse la Bourgogne et la Provence, crossing Burgundy and Provence, qui fait de Paris un petit faubourg de Valence, that brings Paris, that turns Paris into a village outside Valence, and la banlieue de Saint-Paul-de-Vence, and it turns Paris into the suburb of Saint-Paul-de-Vence. So the idea is the road is so efficient that Paris is much, much closer to southern France now. Le ciel d'été, the summer sky, remplit nos cœurs de sa lucidité, fills, hearts, fills our hearts with lucidity or clarity, clarity. It fills our hearts with clarity. Chasse les aigreurs et les acidités qui font le malheur des grandes cités, tout excité. So basically, this gorgeous blue sky in southern France is going to shoo away everything that makes life so unbearable in stressed out big cities, everything that's bitter, and bad will go away when you reach southern France and its blue sky thanks to la Route Nationale 7. On chante, on fête, we sing, we party, 
Les oliviers sont bleus, ma petite Lisette. The olive trees are blue, ma petite Lisette. My little Lisette. L'amour joyeux est là qui fait risette. The happy love is here, smiling at us. On est heureux. We are happy. National set. Ok, so, as you see this, I'm sorry I couldn't keep up with the comments while I was translating. I um, hope I didn't miss anything, but I'll go back later. <laughs> so, basically, Charles is delighted. He's delighted to ride on that road and he conveys the excitement of all the people who have driven down that road during their summer vacation, heading south to relax, to have a great time with their family and their friends. And so now we're going to listen to the song. And like last week, I'm going to just uh, point, I think I'll leave it like this so you can kind of keep up and sing if you want to, okay? So let me turn off Monsieur Google over there. Hey Google, stop. Hey Google, stop. Google would not stop. Google has stopped now. Okay, so here we are. Now you can read. Perfect. Let's see. And I'm going to crank up the sound as much as I can, but my backup speaker is not working today, so I'll do my best. Let's see. De toutes les routes de France, d'Europe, celle que je préfère, c'est celle qui conduit en auto ou en autostop vers les rivages du midi. National 7. Il faut l'apprendre qu'on aille à Rome à 7. Que l'on soit 2, 3, 4, 5, 6 ou 7. C'est une route qui fait à 7. Route des vacances. Qui traverse la Bourgogne et la Provence, qui fait de Paris un petit faubourg de Valence et la banlieue de Saint-Paul-de-Vence. Le ciel d'été remplit nos cœurs de sa lucidité, chasse les aigreurs et les acidités qui font le malheur des grandes cités, tout excité. On chante en fête. Les oliviers sont bleus, ma petite Lisette. L'amour joyeux est là, qui fait risette. On est heureux, National 7. Ok, get ready to dance. Added one here. Holy no cows are lucidated. To take city. On chant en fête. Go Charles! Woo! Let's give it for Charles Trené! Hands up! Yay! <laughs> what did you think? Isn't that, I mean, don't I have the best tour assistant? I think I do. I think I do, I'm sorry. Best tour assistant. <laughs> so, I just can't get away from Charles Trenet. Every time I looked, I found other songs I wanted to talk about, and they're very interesting, and we will get to them. But the weather has been beautiful. It makes me think of Southern France and Provence. And I know people are cooped up right now, and they don't want to hear depressing songs or sad songs. So I just keep going. <laughs> I just keep... Yes, Oliver, you get more on Patreon. Absolutely. You get lots of rewards on Patreons. We had a great meeting on Zoom this week where we talked about 
French life, real French life, not just the stereotypes of what we see sometimes on Instagram. We had a one hour meeting and we exchanged information about how the French live, where they live, where they shop, what they eat, how they cook and all that kind of stuff. So yeah, thank you Oliver for reminding me and do look up my Patreon program. It's in the, the bio there in the profile. But Charles Trenet, it's hard to step away from Charles Trenet. So I don't know if next week we'll do Charles Trenet again. If I find a good song that where I can actually create a little story and, and, and share some information with you about Paris and France, I will probably do it again. If not, we will do um, another, another artist. Okay, so now the question is, who's ready for our other segment in this program, which is... Oh la 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 Who's ready for that? <laughs> yes, do check it out. It's a great Patreon program, Oliver. Thank you. Ah, oh la 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 la. That's when the French, that's what the French say when something is overwhelming and not very exciting. But I hope you're more excited than that about our little pronunciation exercise. <laughs> Well, if you no, if you forgot, if you forgot to tune in for the Patreon uh, conversation with Vero, don't worry. If you're a Patreon, if you're a patron or a Patreon member, you do have the replay. It's available. You can just log into Patreon and get it. So you'll have the video, the handouts. Everything is there waiting for you. Okay. So our little pronunciation exercise. Do you remember how last week we talked about nasal sounds? Remember those sounds with where the French have vowels, A, E, I, O, and they, and they bundle them up with an N or an M, and then it creates a whole new sound that's pronounced as a sound. So the N or the M is not pronounced, just a sound. So you had four families, en, un, on, un. Remember how we said it's challenging to differentiate them and how it's not super, like it's not a really big deal if you don't get them exactly right. But we practiced pronouncing names of cities. Hey, we have 121 people. That's awesome. So uh, yeah, do bring your friends each week. I need to get the word out. So please tell your friends about this. This is a free event. Everybody's welcome in my tiny little 260 square foot apartment, 20 square meters. You're all welcome. We'll just pile up and have a great old time every Saturday. So those four nasal sounds, those families, we practiced using them and pronouncing names of cities and then some um, sections of Paris. I thought I'd do the same today and then next week I'll move on to something else because I had other examples to show you. Let's see what time it is. Good. I need to keep a time, keep track of the time because our friends at Instagram will cut me off or cut me out, whatever it is, after an hour. So here are the four families up here and you can see they can be spelled very differently. En, un, en, un. And here are some cities that use some of these nasal sounds. Look at that. The first one I know a lot of you have a hard time with. On y va. That's right. On y va. Let's pronounce some French words here. Come on. And if you're going to write National Set or another French road, it'd be nice if you were actually able to ask for directions and pronounce the name of the city, right? Because, you know, those GPS thingies are great, but sometimes they break down and uh, it's nice to be able to ask somebody. So the first city is in Normandy. And whenever I put those brackets, it means you don't pronounce a letter. I did that to help you. So, Caen is the first one. En is the nasal sound underlined. The A is not pronounced. The C is pronounced like a K. So really, it's Caen. Caen. <laughs> you blew my mind last week with the pronunciation of Reims. Yes, Reims. I know people say Reims. So it's Reims. We talked about Reims, Reims. So Caen. Caen is the first one. Feel free to repeat at home. I can't hear you, but I'm assuming you're, you're, you're being serious about this. And then we have Orléans. Orléans. No, it's not Orleans. It's not New Orleans or Orleans. The S is not pronounced. That's common in French words. A lot of the ending consonants are not pronounced. The A-N is the nasal sound en. Le, A is the small A. I'm going backwards. And or. So we have Or, les, en, Orléans, Caen, Orléans, okay? And then we have the beautiful city in Western France, Nantes, Nantes. Again, the S is not pronounced. It's, it's not there. Pretend it's not there. Nantes, Nantes. 
And then we have the beautiful southern bell. Avignon. Avignon. So when I say we don't pronounce letters separately in a nasal sound, you might be tempted to say Avignon, Avignon, Avignon. But in a nasal sound, the N is not there. It's linked to the O and it's ON. Avignon, Avignon. And then, of course, you might want to buy some mustard and you might say, I want some Dijon mustard. Well, it's not Dijon because the nasal sound is one sound. The N is not pronounced. So it's Dijon, Dijon. Okay? So we have Caen, Orléans, Nantes, Avignon, Dijon. Easy peasy. I will post the replay uh, as a YouTube link and I will share it on Facebook and it should be available in the Instagram stories for 24 hours so you can go back to this later if you want to, okay? Let's do some classics, some Parisian landmarks that you want to be able to pronounce. Beautiful garden, the first one, and a neighborhood as well. Lu, French U, French U, 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 U. Lu, Xan. So my nasal sound here is EM, but it's just the same sound. It's the first family, it's en, en. Lu, Xan, Bourg. O, U is U. So Lux, Lux, Xan, Bourg. Notice I don't pronounce that G at the end. It's not Luxembourg. Luxembourg. You've been to them all. Good for you, but can you say them? Luxembourg. The second one is a very popular museum. Le musée, musée. Notice I don't pronounce the second E. Le musée Rodin. 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 Le musée Rodin. The third one is a favorite. La Sainte, Sainte Chapelle, la Sainte Chapelle, la Sainte Chapelle, and the last one in Versailles, if you've been in the on the beautiful grounds of Versailles, if you strayed away from the chateau to check out the property, the grounds, you have probably visited Le Grand Trianon. Notice how the French don't pronounce the D at the end of grand. So it's not grand. It's grand. No D. Le grand tria. Non. Le grand trianon. Le grand trianon. That's manageable, right? The pronunciation for Saint-Germain-des-Prés. Saint-Germain. Germain is another nasal sound. Saint-Germain. Saint. Saint-Germain. You have two nasal sounds here. The same ones. Saint-Germain-des-Prés. Saint-Germain-des-Prés. I just saw that pop up in the comments. So here we go. Luxembourg. Musée Rodin. Sainte-Chapelle. Le Grand Trianon. Yeah, beautiful concerts at the Sainte-Chapelle and in other churches in Paris. I was actually signed up to go to one at Saint-Germain-des-Prés and um, with the lockdown, everything got cancelled. Okay, so one last time, my friends, one last time. Caen, Orléans, Nantes, Avignon, Dijon. Again, you do not hear those consonants, those N's. It's one sound. Luxembourg, Musée Rodin. Sainte-Chapelle, Le Grand Trianon. Okay? My favorite is your language lessons. Awesome. You know, I teach French online now. Our classes are starting next week. The intermediate uh, group is sold out for the next four weeks. We will open more sessions later. The advanced group still has openings in it. So go to the French Girl in Seattle website to get information about that. FrenchGirlInSeattle.com if you're interested in learning French avec moi on Zoom. Okay, let's turn this around. Voila! So now we have spoken French, a little bit of French. You were repeating after me, that's very good. Five points to you. Heck, ten. Ten points. No, I don't have a beginner level right now because um, if you go to the website, you will see the description of those sessions. They're not traditional French classes. 
They're more of a boot camp, a fun boot camp where we practice, where we focus on communication and conversation. It's really hard to do with absolute beginners. So that's why I'm starting with intermediate and advanced levels, basically. It's not to say I won't add a uh, beginner level later. Uh, and I'll let people know, of course, I'll announce it if I do. Avec plaisir. You're welcome. Avec plaisir. I'm glad you enjoyed our pronunciation session. So let's see, we have 15 minutes left. Perfect timing. I did spill my water all over uh, the kitchen, but that's okay because the wine was still in the fridge. <laughs> so I still have wine. Um, so we can look at l'apéro because for me it's apéro time. I know you probably have some morning drinks for some of you on the West Coast or some lunchtime beverages, maybe a glass of wine for others. Um, yep, those two words are tough. Bouygues, Bouygues and écureuil, the squirrel. It's hard for French people to say it in English, mind you. Uh, Bouygues et écureuil, écureuil. Yes, yeah, save the wine, you betcha. Okay, so today we are going to, let me get, uh, hold on, let me do this. I think you can see if I do this with my cute little pantry in the back. This is the size of my pantry, just so you, just so you see what it's like to live in a Parisian studio. And as always, I'm trying to grab the bottle without pulling the microphone out of the, out of the, um, Phone, that would be ugly and I think I did it okay okay what did Veronique Vero get for l'apéro well last week as you recall we were in the Loire remember how we were in the Loire and I had some uh, delicious my favorite white wine, which is Sancerre. And I also went and got two different types of goat cheese from that area. I like having cheese with wine that comes from the same area as the wine. It's the concept of the terroir. You know, they came from the same geographical area, from the same soil. So I like to, uh, to do that. And today I was determined to have rosé. You see my beautiful rosé? This is a bandol. And um, it's, um, it's a pretty dry rosé. And if you look at the color, it's very light in color. And I will show you where it comes from. This is what I used on my Rick Steves tours last, uh, last season to show people on the, on the coach where we were. <laughs> so uh, if you see, I hope you can see, it's not too blurry. Maybe I'll do this. In southern France, right here, number 83, this is known as Le Var, and this is where this wine came from. So I was looking, and this whole region is Provence, Alpes, Côte d'Azur, so it includes the French Riviera, it includes Provence. This is where this wine came from. So I was looking for cheese to go with it. Unfortunately, the, the goat cheese I had in mind, because the Loire, which is right here, has a lot of goat cheese, but you find goat cheese also in other areas, including here in Provence. And they didn't have any at my fromagerie. Uh, it wasn't quite the season yet for the one I had in mind. So instead, um, the fromager, a good fromager will make suggestions when they don't have what you're looking for. He suggested a goat cheese that's right here in this section. So roughly between the cities of Nantes and Bordeaux. Huh? And it's part of the Nouvelle, the New Aquitaine, which is one of the newest regions they created a few years ago. So it's not really the south. I wouldn't call it Provence, right? Because it's right here. But it's, it, you know, it's getting there. It's close to the southwest. So um, he gave me this cheese that I thought was really interesting. Uh, it's called, I, I haven't had it honestly in years. I don't even remember having it. It's called Longor. Longor, L apostrophe A N G O R S. And that cheese, check it out, that cheese comes in a diamond shape. See, I sliced it so you could see it inside. And it's a diamond shape. It's a goat cheese. And it's a pretty small production. It's made by a few people directly at the farm. And you know, goats, they'll have their babies early in the spring and then they produce a lot of milk. So what you do to make good goat cheese is to really let them graze all day outside between, let's say, April and early fall. And this grass, the flowers they eat, means the milk is excellent. So this is really the big 
production time for goat cheese. It's between April and October. So this cheese, I'm going to enjoy a little later. I have some baguette today. And then to stay in the Provence theme, I went for something instead of tapenade, which is made with olives, I went with a poivronade. Oop, I'll do this so you don't have the comments in the middle. Yes, the opinel knife. I'll talk about that next. But the poivronade is made with red peppers, some olive oil, some garlic, and it's uh, a little spicy because this one they added some piment d'espelette, that uh, potent uh, pepper that's um, from the Basque region, from uh, southwestern France. So it's really good and you spread it on baguette, it's going to be nice. And of course I have some olives. Um, I think they're mixed with uh, olive oil and some herbs as well. So all in all, this does have a little bit of a Provencal flavor to me with this beautiful weather we've had. And um, I think I'll enjoy that. I'm not going to eat the whole cheese tonight. I will pour a generous pour. Remember I told you those glasses are called Ballon, B-A-L-L-O-N, and they're pretty small and they came with my uh, apartment, my studio, which is furnished. So um, look at the color of this rosé, it's just beautiful. Look. How about that? Oliver, if you're still there, Lina, Parisian postcard should probably do this as a watercolor. The glass of rosé and the Parisian rooftops, that would be amazing. If you haven't seen uh, Lina's watercolors on Parisian postcards on Instagram, you should go see them. She's amazing and she, she did uh, actually paint this view from my window um, and sent it to me and she gave me the original. It's a beautiful watercolor. So the rain has stopped. We have 100 and we went up to 125, 130 people today. This is amazing. See the, the rain? You can see the clouds still from the rain we had earlier. And I want to say santé. Normally I would look at you in the eye and I would say santé or chin chin to your good health, my friends. I want to thank you for uh, coming back for Apéro with Vero number four. Um, it's been a lot of fun for me. I hope you've enjoyed the tour uh, along the National Set and the Charles Trenet song and the little French tutorial, French language tutorial. So please, if you want to help me, you know, we're all trying to figure out how to ride out this storm without being able to leave our houses. Look at the sky over there. You can see it's raining over there. It's beautiful. Isn't that pretty? If you want to help out, please tell all your friends about Apéro with Vero. And if you want to encourage me and support me to create more of these programs, please uh, visit me on Patreon. Uh, under the name French Girl in Seattle. I have created some pretty cool rewards for my patrons and quite a few people have joined me already and we're, we're having a lot of fun. There are some events every month and things I share with them. So that's one way you can help me. Visit the blog, the Facebook community, Instagram, and then come and see me here for Apéro with Vero on Saturdays. Um, and I hope you're all uh, hanging in there taking care of uh, yourselves, taking care of each other, holding hands, whatever it takes to ride this out. France still has a ways to go. We were told earlier this week that the confinement, as they call it, would not end probably until May 11th. And that's, I think, a tentative date. A lot of people seem to think they're gonna pack their bags and head out to Southern France on that, the road National Set on May 11th. I think they're in for a big disappointment if they think that. But some of us realize it might not happen. <laughs> and you know what? If it doesn't happen, it doesn't happen. I'll keep broadcasting from here. I'll keep writing on Facebook, on the blog. I'll keep toasting you if I don't hit the camera with rosé wine or another wine. And um, I think we'll have a lot of fun anyway. So I, you could watch this view all day. I'm sorry I haven't read comments a whole lot today. I was busy. Uh, um, yes, Patreon is a separate feature with content. And a lot of creators right now, uh, tour guides in particular, um, or live streamers or other creators um, are going to Patreon to, um, 
to get some support because that's what's paying the bills to tell you the truth right now. I am a tour guide and um, I'm not going to be out uh, guiding uh, for the next few months. And um, I am thinking of a way I'm going to do that anyway. I have a few ideas and uh, with the support of my patrons, I'm going to be able to actually uh, get a few projects started. So that is the goal. Uh, I see the merci, merci, merci. Well, thank you to you all. Wait, I haven't tried my rosé yet. Mm. You know, I didn't tell you, but it's called the Galantin, which is a really cute name. Galantin is a man, it's old fashioned. It means a man who's really gallant. <laughs> so the Galantin is the name of the wine. I don't know if the man was gallant, but uh, it tastes very good. It's a dry rosé, the way I like it. Mm. Borders open for Americans to come to France. I heard perhaps not until September. I don't know. I don't work with President Macron or the other European leaders, but I think that if you set your expectations that um, you will not be able to fly to Europe at least until September, possibly October, you will be less disappointed that way. I don't know that they, they're not in control of the situation yet. I don't think they're on top of this thing, whatever it is. And um, I don't know that international travel, especially travel to Europe, is going to be able to resume, I'm sorry to say, uh, right away. So um, we will be in touch through Facebook, Instagram, the blog. You know, I always stay in touch, even if I'm traveling. So I don't see any reason for this to change. <laughs> and um, the the the. F I think it's almost over actually because it's been an hour so they will cut me off soon. Um, I'm going to say goodbye now and leave you on, how about this one? That's a pretty one with the sun and the shadows. It's lovely. Yeah, this is my little view. I don't even have a balcony so it's helped a lot because I can even work out in my kitchen and open the window and see the sky from down there. <laughs> you do what you have to do. Oh, thanks, Janet. That's right. You just joined Patreon. Thank you, Janet. Welcome. So um, thank you, my friends. Wishing you a great weekend. Please tell your friends about this event and join me again next week, okay? And I will just look at you before I say goodbye. Au revoir. A bientôt. All right. A bientôt.